Hello everyone again. Here we are on Sunday night again, and I welcome all my uh, viewers, and especially my friends in uh, Sitio 3 in the Philippines, and all of the other countries and states and cities. Welcome again. It's uh, My face is kind of red, and I've been out in the sun today. It's the day was, I guess, a little bit cool. It's turning spring here in, in Georgia and uh, enjoying the sun was, it's been a while. My wife's talking about how wonderful the sun is and it is and spring's really beautiful and wonderful. I like this time of year and the, the, the trees are starting to turn green again and it's kind of a, a testimony to the faithfulness of Almighty God, how all the leaves fall off and it looks like everything's died. But just as sure as that happened, the spring comes in a few months and everything comes back to life again. Great is the faithfulness of our God. I want to just uh, go through Psalms chapter 1 tonight. Um, many of the Psalms are uh, wonderful things to talk about. And, um, so Psalms chapter 1, verse 1. It starts off like this. Blessed or happy is or how happy. Uh, one of the phrases, how happy is the man. Blessed is the man. Uh, everybody wants to be happy, right? But, well, I'm just not happy. <laughs> you ever heard that term? And all kinds of, use that for all kinds of excuses to do what we want to do. Well, do we really mean that? Do you really want to be happy? Well, then listen to what the Word of God has to say. How happy is the man? And in this uh, instance, I think it's safe to say, not just men, but mankind. How happy is the person, the man, the woman, the boy, the girl, that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly? And I think walketh, you could put in there, who moves forward in the counsel of the ungodly. Who do you get your counsel from? Maybe that's why you're not very happy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, wisdom leads to good things and foolishness leads to bad things. Uh, if you want to be happy, it's good to avoid the counsel of the ungodly. The ungodly will not give you good counsel. Now, I'm not saying that they never have anything right to say. That's not my point. But if, if your counselor in life is an ungodly person, then you're going to probably make some mistakes in your life that you wouldn't make if you didn't have, if you had godly counsel. So find you a strong Christian person, Mr. and Mrs. Christian, and they don't have to be old, although uh, wisdom tends to come uh, be associated with older people, the more, the older they are, especially if they've been Christians a long time, hopefully, and they should be a lot wiser and have experienced a lot of things in life that you haven't figured out yet. And they already have, they may have even learned a lot of those things the hard way. They really know, but it doesn't have to be an old person. It can be uh, anyone, I think, who's established in the faith for a while that would give you godly counsel. How happy is the person who walks in the counsel of the godly? And how uh, blessed is that person who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly? That's pretty clear. You might say, that's pretty simple stuff, Nicky. Well, then let, let's you, me and you practice that and take our counsel from people who's going to give us good godly counsel. So he says, how happy is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly? 
nor standeth in the way of sinners. And standeth is a little bit different than walketh, but I think you can think of it in a way of becoming established. You're not only just taking advice from ungodly people, but now you're establishing your way, your road of life, as it were, who standeth in the way of sinners. Don't walk in the road of sinners. It, it will not lead to happiness. You can trust me on that. You can trust the word of God on that, of course. How happy is the man that standeth not in the way or the road of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. And you see how it's progressing? Here's someone walking, then standing, and then sitting. It's, it's kind of like uh, one is like paying attention to and the other one's like um, kind of hanging out there. <laughs> and the third one is if they build a house and start living in it right there, just sat right down there in the seat of the scornful. And if you want to be happy, you sure don't want to sit in the seat of the scornful. Um, scornfuls might be what you think. Uh, to make mouths at, to mock or scoff. And I kind of think of this a little bit. Here's a person that's so ungodly and so rebellious and so out of touch with the things of the Almighty that they even make fun of those things. And, and I, the older, the longer I live in this generation, in this age and period of time we live in, there's a lot of people that have sat down and taken up residence in that kind of thing. And the thing, I've experienced it recently, people that maybe didn't realize how ridiculous some of the things they were saying, it seems like they've taken up residence in ungodly things. It's not a wise practice to do. Notice what the next verse says. But, <laughs> in other words, here, here's a contrast here. Here's this, but here's this. So the, the godly, the, the wise person, his delight is in the law of the Lord. His delight. Think about that. What do you delight in? What thrills your heart? That's a pretty important question. And your decision-making decides where you put yourself in life. You can choose to take seriously the things of Almighty God, and it's easy to find out the ways of Almighty God. He sent us, as some preacher would say, a love letter. And says, you know, if you will get in this and learn this, you'll learn how to please me. You can come to know me. You can be introduced to me. <laughs> Do you delight in, in the law of the Lord, his precepts, his statutes, his guidance, his ways? There's a lot of words you can put here. Do you delight yourself in the ways and the teachings of Almighty God. And if you don't, again, I could ask a question. No wonder you aren't very happy. Because true, genuine, and I like to, you remember recently I used the term true blue. <laughs> That's just a simple American phrase, but the real deal happiness comes from choosing wisely and the ways of the Almighty, they may not just make you happy right away, but it has this effect of catching up with you after a while of walking in his ways. The goodness of Almighty God just catches up to you and, and comes on you in your life. And I like that. It doesn't mean that you won't have trouble. I, I know this for a fact. You, if... You'll have trouble whether you're a saint or a sinner. And by the way, I use the word saint on purpose. 
A saint is a follower of Christ who has a pure heart. That's a saint. They want to please Almighty God. So, you know, saints and sinners alike have trouble come to their life. But if you want genuine, genuine, deep, settled happiness in your life, then, like it says here, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. The ways of the Lord, the statutes and precepts, the teachings, his guidance. Because the ways of sin and evil bring heartache. And I'm talking about long-lasting heartache. It just kind of sticks on you and you can't get it off without turning away from the ways of evil to the Almighty. So you want to be happy? Learn to delight yourself in the things of Almighty God. That seems simple. Again, this is simple stuff, isn't it? So if it's so simple, why aren't we doing this more? Let's make this a practice in our life. Let's get in this book and learn what pleases Almighty God and put that to practice in our life. And this, this doesn't just happen overnight. It happens over a long period of time. One, one passage, I like this passage, that um, the Almighty was speaking to one of his prophets, and he said, those who honor me, those are the people that I honor. And the people that treat me lightly, I treat them lightly. Again, a very simple truth. But if you want to be happy, you need to treat him seriously. And you know, and he knows, I know, and he knows when I'm doing that. We can fool everybody around us. Oh, you know, everything's wonderful. Oh, no, you know, everything. My life's sweet. Well, you know, and Almighty, go, Almighty God knows the truth of that. But I can fool the people around me and convince them that everything's rosy and everything when everything's not rosy at all. If you want genuine happiness, you must learn the ways of Almighty God. You must become introduced to him, if you will, to come to know him personally and walk in his ways, and happiness will pursue you and ch uh, chase you down. And by the way, the happiness I'm talking about, you can even be sad because you lost a loved one or sad because something bad happened and still have this deep, settled happiness in your life. Fact. That's the kind of happiness that we should, as it say, give you right arm for, right? To the kind of happiness that knows that it's well with my soul. If I were to die tonight, everything's fine. And if things do go difficult, there's one who loves me that stands with me and encourages me and, and loves on me and helps me through those things. There's someone there that when I don't know what to do, I can pray a simple prayer from the depths of my heart and uh in a genuine way, and he'll hear my prayer and inspire me with answers to my questions. I've had that happen numerous times. Not because I'm so brilliant. That's not the point. He's there to help those who love him from the heart with sincerity. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and notice this, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Not only does he read the law or the precepts, the teachings of Almighty God, but he thinks on them. This word meditate, it even comes with the idea of murmur, not as in complaining, but as in mumbling the verse, like, um, one verse I like a lot, it says, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. So you're mumbling this to yourself. Medi and you think on it, meditating in it, saying it, memorizing it. And it becomes a part of you. The word murmur in this case. Okay? Uh, also to ponder and even imagine. You're, you're, you're thinking about this verse and every, you're turning it over, looking at it from that way and you're 
you're studying it from this angle. So you get to know Christ, to know his word. In his law or in his teachings, his ways, meditate day and night. Happiness comes from knowing and practicing the ways of Almighty God. Some people say, well, well Brother Nicky, what, what about you must be born again? If, if you don't know him, then you've not been born again. That's To be born again is to turn your life over to him. That's the start of knowing him, is to realize that we're lost and need a Savior, okay? So I, I'm not excluding being born again. To know him, it starts with, turning our life over to him and, and then learning who he is and helping him to, uh, asking him to help us to uh, make our lives like his teachings are. In his law doth he meditate, ponders day and night. I like that, it says day and night, all the time in other words, con continually. I'm getting his word, his truth in me. And when I get in there right, it, it starts showing up in my life. Okay, verse, verse 3 says, And this person, and he shall be like this, like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. A fruitful tree that has plenty of nourishment will produce lots of good fruit. The man that learned that doesn't walk in the way of uh, doesn't walk in the counsel, as we said, of the ungodly, doesn't stand in the way of sinners, doesn't sit in the seat of the scornful, but delights in the teachings of Almighty God is like a tree planted by a river. <laughs> that tree has everything it needs and it produces much good fruit. That's how this person will be. And it says his leaf also shall not wither. He's full of life. And notice, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. There's a lots of ways of looking at the word prosper, I think. I don't think we're talking about he's going to get rich, although that is part of the ways of the Lord tend toward prosperity. They do. And the Bible is clear on that. However, this prosperity goes far past that, where your life is blessed. Good things come on your life. It says, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. If you're, if you're learning the ways of the Lord, his teachings and all, and putting them to practice in your life, that prospers your life, okay? Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Everything he does will show forth Almighty God, is your life showing, you know, it's 2021, right? 12 months ago is 2020 in April. Is your life showing forth a little bit more this year, Almighty God, than it was last year? It should be. Is my life, do it should. Be honest with yourself. If it's not, it's like, well, maybe you need to get back into his word and, and into closer fellowship with him. Because that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water. It brings forth fruit and his leaf doesn't wither. 
and everything he does will prosper. I want to be like that. Verse 4 says, the ungodly are not so. You notice the psalmist is drawing a contrast between the godly and the ungodly. The godly man doesn't take ungodly counsel. That's it's not wisdom at all. He doesn't walk in his ways. He doesn't sit in his ways. He doesn't become a mocker and maker a making fun of the ways of the Almighty. The, the godly man doesn't do that. And the ungodly does do that kinds of things. And it says here, the ungodly are not like the godly, but they're like the chaff which the wind drives away. Now, we... Where I'm from, it'd be more like growing corn and stuff, maybe. But wheat, it has, it's little grains of wheat, and it has a husk around it. You don't eat the husk. That's not what, that's what, not what humans need to be eating. They need to get to the, to the wheat. And they would throw the, the wheat up in the air, and the, the grains of wheat are denser and heavier and they would tend to fall back down and be caught, but the chaff being light, the wind blows and it moves away. The bad part, if you will, the part that you don't want to eat. So the ungodly are like the chaff which the wind drives away. That doesn't sound very good, does it? So if you want to just be driven away and and have sorrow and unhappiness in a bad way and everything, then being ungodly and not taking the advice and counsel of the Almighty will get you there. And, and I will repeat, just because you're a godly person doesn't mean you won't suffer things, but you still have this deep-seated peace and happiness in your heart, knowing that all things work together for good to them that love Almighty God. But the ungodly are like the chaff that the wind blows away. Verse 5, Therefore the, all, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. On the judgment day they'll fall. They won't stand. The judgment day will reveal all who each one of us are because uh, being judged by Almighty God who is light and truth, it reveals, the judgment will reveal who we are. And if we're ungodly, all that ungodliness will catch up to us. If it's not caught up to us before the judgment, and some of it does, it will catch up with us on the judgment day and Mr. and Ms. Christian and Mr. and Mrs. Sinner, the judgment day is coming. And who will be able to stand on that day? Only the godly, not the ungodly. The godly who have followed, and not the people who say they're Christians either. That's not what I'm talking about. The people who are learning the ways of Almighty God. They're coming to know Him. There's one, Christ Himself said, and this is life eternal, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. To know Him, to have a personal relationship with Him. And some scoffer sitting out there might say, <laughs> I've been hearing stuff like that my whole life, Nikki. There's nothing to that. Yeah, the, the scoffers will not stand on the judgment day. And so prove that, Nikki. I don't have to prove it. It'll be proven one day, not too far distant. It'll be proven. The scoffers and the ungodly. What was that other word? Sinners. The only difference really between these people and the godly is that the godly have turned their life over to Almighty God through Jesus Christ. That's the only difference. 
None of us are good in of ourselves. And the judgment day will reveal our decisions and who we are. And there, there's nothing going to change that. All we have to do is come back 100 years from now, and we'll see about that. And we'll see if the scoffers are right. We will see. And if you've chosen the ways of Almighty God, sometimes that's not the easy road, but it'll pay off. And I encourage you, Mr. and Mrs. Christian, you walk in the ways of Almighty God. It will pay off. As the song says, it will be worth it all. Week after week, I try to encourage you, Mr. and Mrs. Christian, don't be taken down by the things of the world. Don't let the mockers and the scoffers intimidate you and get you to change your mind. Don't do it. It will be worth it all. It will pay off. And I've made my decision. I trust in the words of Almighty God. I believe them. I believe them more than I believe the numbers that come on my bank statement. I trust them more. Money in the bank account can fly away in, in a moment. Are you trusting in that? Don't trust in that. Put your trust in Almighty God. It will be worth it. It says, therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. There will be a, there's a, a story that Christ told about the sheep and the goats, and he separates them, and the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left, and he separates them one from the other. The judgment day is coming, and there will be a separation of the sheep and the goats, and you can be one of the sheep. Almighty God invites you. He invites you to come and take of the water of life freely. It's there for the taking. Don't be a foolish man or a foolish woman or boy or girl. You will not stand in the congregation of the righteous on that day if you choose that path. But if you'll choose life through Christ, he'll help you. But well, I don't know how to do that. I, I won't. You don't have to know. He'll teach you and help you. You can be there in the congregation of the righteous, but the ungodly will not stand in the judgment, and sinners won't stand in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. There's that word knows again. See, a personal relationship. He knows me, and I know him. It's beautiful. He's with me in the hard times and the good times and the, the times of laughter, the times of sadness and mourning, the times of great need. He's with me then. In prosperity, he's with me. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. The Lord knows the way of righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. You know, a lifetime really isn't that long. I'm, I'm in my 60s now. In one way, that seems like it's been a long time. In another way, it seems like, wow, it's gone by so fast. A human life is not very long. And, and we need to be very careful. Notice that last phrase there. But the way of the ungodly shall perish. It's very bad. You don't want any part in that. And so I encourage you. Well, if you're a sinner, I encourage you, please. Cry out to Almighty God with all your heart. It says, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved or delivered or rescued. Rescued from what, Brother Mickey? From eternal damnation. From your sins and from eternal damnation. It's there for the having. Don't go the way of the foolish man, the ungodly man. 
walk in the ways of Almighty God and live eternally through Jesus Christ our Lord. I hope you have a good week. Almighty God bless you.